Hey, what's up stream keepers and welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I actually wanted to share with you guys about selective breeding, which is one of the topics that has been always uh, being asked about. Um, yes, I have done a series of selective breeding uh, topics. I have also done quite a bit of uh, videos on that. However, in this video, we will use some live examples to actually showcase what is actually um, the things that I actually look for. And of course, you know, what are some of the tools that I actually use in terms of um, selective breeding. So I think that is uh, critical um, from a stream breeding perspective because uh, without selective breeding, you are actually you know uh, trying to breed them and not getting the results that you actually wanted. So having selective breeding, you can actually sh uh, you know go in towards the direction that you actually want want to. So that will actually help a lot in terms of your uh, progression, in terms of your stream breeding journey, in terms of your entire end to end experience in terms of uh, stream breeding as well. So however, you know, before we actually start, um, you know, going to the topic today, uh, I actually wanted to give a special shout out to all those, you know, lawyer fans out there uh, who has given me a lot of uh, you know, encouragement in terms of the things that I've been doing, the, the, the videos I've been put forward, you know, and, and the, the time and the effort to actually, you know, show and share all this information. Um, you know, certainly one of the, one, one of the things that I, I do a little bit differently from the rest is that I generally do not actually um, join into those you know big chat groups and, and things like that because I find that it, it, it's, it kind of like steals away the, the time uh, to really focus on the things that you, you, are, you are able to actually uh, do as well. Like for example, uh, you know everybody has 24 hours a day. Um, if you're gonna spend you know two hours or one hour, two hours just to you know, skim through 2,000, 3,000 messages. I think that is in itself um, not sustainable. Uh, and every time when I, I, before I do something, I will actually have to ask myself, you know, is this a long-term thing? Is this a sustainable approach? Uh, if it's not a sustainable approach, then uh, definitely we will try to see whether can we tweak it or we will not even introduce it as well. So, so that's the reason why I uh, do not join in, in terms of uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, chat groups. However, you know, it doesn't mean that I, I'm not aware of what is actually happening. Uh, there, there is a lot of feedback, you know, uh, from other channels as well. So that, it, it, you know, it comes to me, um, you know, good, always, I, so far, I've always heard about positive stuff, about, you know, all these sharing sessions, about the quality of the streams and, and things like that. So I uh, would like to take this opportunity to actually give a shout out to those who are really supportive and, uh, you know, uh, truly, you know, uh, trying to contribute to the to the entire community. So in today's topic, you know, uh, selective breeding, I'm going to use a very simple example uh, so that you can actually uh, grasp the concept. So I actually want to share with you the concept so that you can actually, you know, uh, think through it and then of course, you know, use it as a, as a guiding principle to actually uh, do your selective breeding. So in, in in this topic, I will just use uh, Black Ninja as an example. Um, you know, Black Ninja is a selective breeding uh, stream that is being created by Hua uh, in Taiwan. Uh, it is uh, a reverse, um, how, how would I put it, reverse selective breeding from the normal forward, re uh, selective breeding forward, meaning going forward uh, from the four, four band you know, PBL towards a, you know, a Mozura PBL is moving forward, which there is a lot of white in there. Um, you know, in, in that sense, and then moving backwards, instead of having a white body, you know, you make it all black, and having that uh, one one line, uh, they call it in Chinese, uh, um, we, we translate it into uh, one band ninja, you know, but, uh, but it's uh, essentially uh, a black ninja, so a black ninja with one stripe at the back, um, that is being reverse selective bread, meaning from PBL, uh, four band to to uh, black ninja. So from there, you can actually see that you know from from that perspective, uh, there will be some you know phenotypes that that will come out and appear that uh, that's without the, the band you know that, that the one line behind the back, and that is the ones that we are actually trying to select this out um, you know to differentiate uh, between the ones with one band and the ones without the band. I think that is in itself uh, trying to move towards where the black ninja has the total black body and have just having that, that face mask at, at the very front. So that is the reason why we call that uh, black ninja. Of course, definitely this is um, 
not something that we that that we kind of like uh, the name actually got translated directly from Chi Chinese uh, Mandarin, um, and that's the I think and, and that name really stuck stuck for quite some time. <coughs> so what I actually look for from uh, in a in a black ninja is that the entire black body in itself. However, we also have to go one step further in uh, to actually remove the males from that you know the breeding colony uh, or that grow up tank and the reason for that is because the male to female ratio is very very critical i always give this example uh, when i speak to breeders um, like for example if we have one male right if you have one male and we have five females um, you know when one of this female mode it is fine that this male and this female you know they can actually breed i think there's not much of a risk in terms of cannibalization uh, however you know if let's say this is five males and this is one female and this female modes and then all five males go on it i think that is disastrous so um that's the reason why you know i when i do uh, selective breeding i also take this opportunity to actually remove the, the males from the from the, the colony and, and put them put them aside so if you ask me what are the sizes when I start to do selective breeding, uh, it is the size where you can actually uh, differentiate between male and female. It's about 0.8 cm. You can actually start to differentiate male and female uh, up to 1.2 cm. Uh, the reason for that is because when you are at 0.8 cm, the males can actually fly, which means that the male can actually start to reproduce with other females. And, and that in itself, if it's a selective breeding, a very strict selective breeding process, uh, <clears throat> it is not advisable so that is the reason why we remove all the streamless out from from the main tank uh, and put it inside the grow up tank so the grow up tank from there 0 0.8 cm we will start to look at you know what are some of the criteria what are some of the specifications that we actually want and then we start to you know do the selection process uh, if you ask me uh, do i have difficulties differentiating male and female uh, definitely uh, however over a time over a long period of time of practice and practice and practice um, of course some tools like you know for example i I actually use this uh, magnification tool uh, or glasses. That actually, I, I actually wear them on. You know, I just just go through my you know my my glasses and I actually see them. They actually help to uh, help me focus in terms of uh, where I can actually look at because we look at the antennas to achieve almost ninety five percent accuracy in terms of male to female uh, selection. So you can actually get all this uh, very you know it's a I I use three three times three times uh, magnification uh, it helps me um, to actually look at the streams uh, better however i cannot really use that and walk around because it gives it is i start to spin in, in that sense it, it gets dizzy um, um, from, from from that so other tools uh, that i actually use uh, that is very handy is you know nets like this you know nets i use a, a variety of nets um, and i use them you know i use them um, no different length like for example we have some 40 cm we have some at 30 cm we have some at you know 10 cm and these are all the nets that i, I actually use in terms of uh you know during the selective breeding process um and and the small nets are actually very helpful especially when you put them into the breeder box um then they actually you know because the the, the tier you know the you know that the tier clearance like, like this tier clearance um having shorter nets actually helps a lot and 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 i also encourage having you know changing your nets uh so very often uh the reason is because when this gets soft it you know it it doesn't work as as well i like them you know really hard uh really hard in the sense that you know uh, it helps to actually move the streams easily um and what do you actually use the, the old nets for uh, so what i do is that you know i actually you know so one of the very early videos i actually uh, encourage to reuse them so for example i will cut off the net and then i'll just bend them and this will be a very good you know gravel uh, fine tuning tool that you actually can use so we have the long ones for the the, the long tank the, the big tanks and then we have the short ones for the you know the nano tanks as well so these are some of the the tools that i've been using and and of course boxes um, there are a lot of uh, boxes in in the market i'm actually trying to uh you know during this time to to look through some of these boxes at, uh you know selective bring boxes to actually look at uh where and what is suitable as well so currently i'm on the lookout if you have any you know suggestions in terms of 
uh, good breeding boxes, good selective breeding boxes that I can actually use to actually do selection uh, so that I can move streams easily and, and things like that. It has to be, um, it has to be uh, seamless in the sense that when I move the entire box from one place to the other, can I actually do the selection in the box and then bring this box to another facility and things like that. So these are some of the things that are actually going through my mind uh, to actually think through what can be much better than, than it is currently today. So these are some of the tools that I actually use. Uh, and one of the most important tool that I actually encourage people using uh, during this is actually Calyx Ball, the Calyx Ball or Lupao or you know, Calyx Ball Plus. And the reason for that is because in itself, the protein content on the Calyx Ball is at least 40%. So it has been lab tested. Um, it's, 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 really, it's really effective and I've been using it for a long, long time. For those people who are, you know, who are great fans of it uh, and know and understand how, how, how to use them uh, properly, um, they, they have also benefited as well. Um, so has there any been any setbacks uh, for people who, who do not really know how to use it for the first time? They, 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 they may not soak it the, the, the correct way or they misread the information or they misunderstood the information. I think that's fine. So as long as you continue to use it, um, to understand how to use it, I think it's, it's more important in itself, um, as, especially when the delivery, I think it's one of the better delivery methods in terms of uh, protein count. Um, you know, there are other ways of, of course, introducing protein to the, to, the, to the streams. However, you know, what has it got to do with selection process? One of the things is streamlets love the Calyx ball. They always congregate around the Calyx ball and that is where you can actually easily scoop them out uh, to the grow up tank. You know, having that right in front of the, uh, in front of the tank, it helps a lot because you can actually you know, net them out much easily. Of course, you can use the food and then they will come. However, you know, to net streamlets out from a, you know, a big tank takes time. So that is the reason why selection process takes a long time. It, it actually, uh, you know, in terms of <coughs> In terms of water change, in terms of resetting of tanks, in terms of feeding, in terms of all this selection process, the entire process actually takes a much longer time. It will take at least 80 to 90 percent of my time. Uh, so 80 to 90 percent of my time is actually doing selection process. So what I'm doing is that I'm actually selecting the streams. I'm actually trying to you know put on these uh, glasses to actually take a look at, at uh, is it male or female to remove them and things like that. So we have to have. A lot of time in it uh, just to remove the streamlets out from the tank it could probably take up to an hour an hour and a half um, and that takes you know if you multiply that to the number of tanks or the number of types of streams that you actually want to select uh, selectively breed it takes a, a much longer time so what do i actually see um, in terms of the streams like i've mentioned i will guide you with the concept uh, the concept is to actually you know have that idea of what the stream you want uh, in mind and then after that you select it based out of the phenotype um, phenotype meaning that you actually you can actually see uh, the, the, the the stream in itself uh, like for example if there's a black band or there's no black band so that is you know uh, a, a layman way of saying that you can actually see uh, what it is what it is however the genotype that is something that is going to be a more difficult discussion because it, there is dominant and recessive genes uh, that it's going to take some time in terms of um, understanding uh, and the reason is because if you have you are going to that level of genotype it also means that the sourcing strategy is very important the sourcing of the streams and the history and the traceability of the stream is very critical because uh, without traceability you you are not sure where the stream come from and what are some of these recessive genes that may come out in the 11 or 12 generation later uh, that is something that is still an unknown so having the phenotype is much easier you can actually see uh, genotype there's a sourcing strategy that is something that you have to really uh, think through uh, in terms of where you want to get your streams from um, how the lineage is being formed and things like that i think that is uh is rarely talked about because uh, sourcing strategy is not something that is widely available to everybody. You know, you, you can't get streams uh, out from somewhere uh, easily, just like your local store. So, so I think in, 
uh, from a selective breeding process, the concept, uh, using phenotype, I think that is uh, sufficient. However, if you can go one step further, I'm sure that will definitely help you in the, in the long term. So thank you very much for uh, watching this video. Uh, appreciate the time. And uh, until next time, peace out.